Deputy Minister of Transportation, Al Haji Al Hassan Tampuli, has indicated that the public sector reform for results project is currently helping with the country's efforts to purchase more electric vehicles. The project is being carried out closely with the Ministry of Energy and the Ministry of Finance. During a stakeholders' consultation in Takrade, Mr. Tampuli noted that the transport sector plays a crucial role in the smooth operation of the economy and is essential in promoting social cohesion. However, Ghana's transport industry has developed into a significant source of greenhouse gas emissions like other parts of the world. This is a result of fossil fuel-powered cars such as petrol and diesel engines. The deputy minister said data by the DVLA as of 2022 showed that there were about 3.2 million registered vehicles in the country. Out of these, 72% are powered by petrol engines, 27% by diesel engines, and less than 1% by LPG and other energy sources. Vehicle emissions, he said, are not only harmful to the environment, but also to our health. Premature deaths and occurrences of asthma and bronchitis have been partially attributed to air pollution. Meanwhile, the UN has warned that allowing global warming to exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius will have grave repercussions. The West African Gas Pipeline Company Limited has stated in a press release that it does not have any technical issues and that its facilities are still fully available to deliver gas. This comes after a press release issued by the Ghana Grid Company and the Electricity Company of Ghana, citing limited gas supply and technical challenges from WAPCO as the contributing factors to the power challenge experienced in the country. According to Gridco, the operator of the National Interconnected Transmission System, there was a deficit in thermal power generation due to limited gas supply from the Etuabo gas processing plant and the WAPCO. This had consequently caused a supply gap of 650 megawatts at peak time, which was to affect consumers in some parts of the country. However, WAPCO has asserted that the actual cause of the problem was that the Ghana National Gas Company's plant at Isuabo went down and therefore there was no gas available for WAPCO to transport. The West African Gas Pipeline Company Limited owns and operates the West African Gas Pipeline, a sub-regional infrastructure linking natural gas resources to customers with a growing demand for cleaner and more efficient energy in the West African sub-region, especially in Ghana. According to South Africa's Minister of Power, Dr. Kosienso Ramokopa, the country's ability to generate power is showing signs of growth and stability. This comes after the minister discussed the development of the Energy Action Plan's implementation on Sunday during his weekly media briefing. Ramokopa outlined the generating performance for the three to seven days of July 2023 and stated ESCOM was able to maintain an improvement in energy availability of more than 60%, resulting in lower levels of of load shedding. He said the progress is tribute to the fact that the country has stayed the course. The country, he said, has been able to maintain the trend line approximating that 60% energy availability factor. In megawatt terms, the running average for the week is about 28,272 megawatts. In relation to the energy action plan, the country has been able to mobilize private sector players. He added further that the energy action plan's accountability issues were being strengthened. Iraq and French oil major Total Energies have signed a $27 billion energy pact aiming to enhance oil production and boost the country's energy capacity through four oil and gas and renewable projects. The deal, which was signed in 2021, was delayed due to disagreements between Iraqi politicians over the conditions but was ultimately finalized in April when Iraq decided to take a 30% part in the project, which was lower than initially demanded. Total Energies holds 45% of the company, with Qatar Energy owning the remaining 25%. Chairman and CEO of Total Energy's Patrick Puyen signed the agreement in Baghdad with Iraqi oil minister Hayyan Abdel Ghani. Puyen stated that the project would begin construction this summer and would cost $10 billion over the next four years. Total Energy's also revealed that it plans to build a 1 gigawatt solar power facility to deliver electricity to the Basra regional grid, inviting Saudi business Aqua Power to participate. Visit energyghana.com or energyghanamagazine.com for more on these stories. Energy Brief is proudly brought to you by Airport View Hotel. Energy Ghana TV. Local in focus, global in perspective.